Hello and welcome back to the Toronto Website Developer.com. I am Peter Orsky, the Toronto Website Developer specializing in Drupal. And this is the fourth video tutorial in this 10-part video tutorial series on Drupal 7 and Ubercart. This is our follow-up series where we're looking at more advanced topics. So we're going to switch gears now from the previous video tutorials where we looked at adding functionality. So we looked at coupons with the bulk import and updating our site. Now we're going to actually take a look at the theme and the theme layer. And these next few video tutorials will cover those types of concepts. So for this video tutorial, we're going to take a look at creating a sub-theme based on the Omega theme. And what this will do will be to use Omega, leverage what it provides us uh, as a basis, and then customize that in our own theme so that you know we can always update Omega, but our theme will remain intact and we won't break anything. So this video is going to cover off three different topics. First thing we're going to do is actually looking at uh, automatically installing a sub-theme based on Omega's tools. Uh, it's a module that we're going to get, and you can do that all from within the site. That's the easiest way to do that. The other thing that we're going to look at is if that fails for you because you don't have the proper permissions or your server isn't set up correctly, I'll show you how to manually do this. And the last thing we're going to take a look at is going back to Drush, something that we touched on in the first video tutorial of this series. Uh, and Drush is, you know, as we mentioned before, the Drupal, Drupal shell. And what this allows us to do is a few simple commands automatically create things uh, and leverage a lot of the power of um, other Drush commands to automatically do things for us uh, as repetitive scripts. So that said, I'm over at Drupal.org project themes. And you'll see here that Omega is listed as the second most popular theme for Drupal. And it's right behind Zen. And I get emails all the time from users saying, you know, should I use Zen? Should I use Omega? What should I do here for my theming? Um, I like to think of Zen kind of as like the more advanced theme or sub-theme. So if you're familiar with theming in Drupal, you're comfortable with it, you can use Zen. It just provides you almost like with the bare bones. But again, HTML5, responsive, mobile, all kinds of different functionality comes with it. Omega is a little bit more user friendly for people who are brand new to theming because of the tools that it provides and its integration with Delta and context and that kind of thing. So that's why we're going to use Omega. So we'll go over uh, to the actual Omega project page and, and there's a ton of information here. But the Omega handbook is actually really, really helpful. Uh, and that's what this tutorial is actually based a lot off of is the, the handbook itself. But that said, you're going to scroll down and here's the actual release for Omega and you'll see here that it's got integrations with Delta Omega tools and an Omega UI which would be coming a lot later uh, it's still in development so Delta and Omega are modules that we're going to grab um, and you'll see here that Omega tools automatically references or sorry it doesn't automatically but it references Drush and so you can use that uh, and you'll see Delta integrates with context so there are a few different things we have to download here go ahead and grab Omega then you want to grab Omega tools you want to grab Delta and grab Context. So again, Omega Tools, Delta, and Context are all modules. Omega is your theme. So I've gone ahead, I've already done that. I'm going to assume you know how to do that based on our previous video tutorials. But I'm going to first head over to Modules on my site now. And so, and so uh, one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to look, at, uh, look for Theme. And we'll see we've got theme tools. And this is what's provided by Omega Tools and Delta. So we can go ahead and enable all of these, Delta API, Delta Blocks, Delta Color, Delta UI, and Omega Tools. And just as a brief side note, we'll cover Delta in another video tutorial later on. But what this allows you to do is actually manipulate the theme settings, so theming is what we'll be doing, for your specific site so that they react to different conditions. So they'll look at you know the node type or the specific context that you're looking at uh, and do different layouts for your site. Uh, so it's a pretty powerful module and it's a pretty neat way to actually change up the look and feel of your site without having to go into template files and that kind of thing. So with those enabled, we can now hover over appearance and we'll see that we've got this new menu entry, create new Omega sub theme. And this will actually take us to uh, a user interface that we can go ahead and we can create a new sub theme for our theme or for, for our site. So I'm going to, this is the human readable. So I'm just going to type in UC series theme. You'll see that I've already walked through this previously. Make sure that this tutorial, there are no surprises for it. But we're going to install this automatically. So we're going to create the theme. We're going to automatically install it. And the destination, I only have all available to me because that's the only uh, folder that I have there. So that's why that's only giving me this option. But if you had others, you might uh, be able to choose a specific one for multi-site installation. Again, sidebar to this. Base theme. You've got Omega and you've got Alpha. Both come with the Omega theme. Alpha is essentially just your bare bones. So you only really need to use that if you're kind of more 
experienced, you're a little bit of an expert, um, you know what you're doing, I'd say use alpha. More often than not, you'll use Omega because it's got your resets and it's got some few uh, settings in CSS and that kind of thing, which are your basics that you're going to want to have. So I'd say use Omega, start with that, and then you can always change anything that you need. Last thing that they've got is the starter kit. So what starter kit you're going to use? These are essentially, again, base kind of settings for your site. So more often than not, you're going to choose HTML5 starter kit. Unless you have specific X HTML requirements, then you would choose that. But again, I would think that would be few and far between. And I don't think you'll ever want to go without starting, uh, without using a starter kit. Um, that's one of the, the perks of using Omega is that you get the starter kit and you get some basic settings for your site. So having clicked Save and Continue, uh, we now get the ability to kind of customize this specific something that we're creating. So this name is the one that we've already added, but we can actually add a description, which we'll see. Uh, on our, our theme listing. So we'll just say a custom theme for the UC video tutorial series based on Omega, right? And the version, if you're doing version control, you can change that, but we don't really need to. So I'll hit continue. And this is where we get to actually do some advanced configuration if we wanted to. But one thing we want to do is make sure that this is enabled and it's our default theme. So now it's actually going to be live on our site. And if we check out the advanced configuration, we can actually take a look at the info file. And so one of the things we'll be talking about later is what's called the less framework, and that will be a module we install. And we'll actually have to modify the info file. Um, but if you were doing that right away, or you're watching this video tutorial series in its entirety and you already watched the less framework, you can go ahead and manipulate this right now. But again, that's a little bit further down the line. So we'll just go ahead and hit finish. So with that finished, we can now see we've got UC series theme 1.x. It's our default theme. And if we go to our home page, we can see that we've got a drastically looking different homepage. We've got all these pink columns up and we've got all these debugging bars. And what these are actually provided by is uh, the Omega sub-theme and the Omega tools. Um, and so if we click off blocks, we can see that those disappear. And if we click off the grid, we can see that this disappears. And this is what's recalled uh, for grid uh, development. It's um, specific columns that are certain width. So this is based on the 12 uh, column grid. And so this helps you in terms of laying out your site and understanding the size difference between everything. So you'll see here that obviously we've got a three column layout for our sidebar and then our content is what looks like two, four, six, and then we've got another three column on the side, right? So easy way to line up your, your elements and you can turn off that grid so you don't see it anymore, but that's kind of nice to have debugging and understand what's going on with your spacing. So that's the sub theme. If that all worked for you, that's great. That's the end of the video tutorial for you, unless you want to check out the drush or how to do this manually. Now, sometimes when you're creating these Omega sub themes and you're doing it through the site, if your server isn't configured properly or you don't have right permissions of certain folders, this will error out. So sometimes you'll get the option from uh, Omega tools to download the theme. Um, more often than not, that's the case. You can download it. And then just like we enabled the theme in the first video tutorial series, you just upload it to your site's all themes folder you can go back to appearance, you'll see it listed there, and you can enable it, and you're good to go. Now, if you don't have any of that option, or you didn't install Omega Tools, you want to do this manually, and I'll walk you through that process right now. So, what we've done is I've got Omega uh, module, or Omega theme right here, and you'll see within the Omega theme, we've got starter kits. So, just like I mentioned before, we're going to work with HTML5, so I'm going to copy this, and I'll just take it back to a uh, folder here. And I'm going to change this folder, omega-html5, to the name of my theme. So I'm going to call this UC uh, Theme 2, right? Because it's our second example. And I just want to copy that because I'm going to be pasting it in a bunch of different places. So go back in here. First thing we're going to do this info file is no longer going to be a starter kit. It's going to be UC Theme 2.info. And I'm going to want to open this up. So let's edit it with Notepad. And in here, First thing we're going to do is change this name. This is going to be UC Theme 2, and we'll just remove the underscores because it's a readable name. And we're going to provide a, a description to this, right? So this is this is our second example sub theme created manually, right? Just any example you want. Important, we've got to remove these two lines here, uh, hidden in starter kit. So we're going to go ahead and take those out, and then that's the end of it. That's all you need to change in this info file. So I can go ahead and I can close that. And I don't need my editor anymore. And the next thing that we've got to do is we've got to go into our CSS here. And we see that we've got your theme. This is going to change. So your theme is going to become the theme name. 
So again, we're going to paste this into all of these. And then we're good to go. So that's the ex so that's the extent of actually customizing the sub theme. Now the only thing that we've got to do is actually upload this to our site. So I'm just going to FTP into my site and reload this. You can see I've got some of my old files there. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take UC theme two. I'm going to up. And you can see here, just as a brief comment, UC series theme was already listed here because it was automatically created by the site. And now I've got UC series two. So again, I can get rid of my FTP there. I can get rid of this folder. And now I can go back to appearance. And if we scroll down, I've got UC theme two and I can go enable and set as default. And again, if I go back to the home page, it isn't going to look any different than before, but you see that I've already got this all set up and the theme is now working. So that's how you do that manually in case you have any problems doing this uh, through the interface online. Last thing I'm going to show you is how to use Drush. Uh, and again, this is a super powerful, super awesome way to do things. You might already have Drush open up because you're doing different things on your site. So again, a couple simple commands and you'll have a sub theme created. So let's walk through that. Okay, so here I am in my site. I can go ahead and go Drush dash dash help. And you'll see here when we do that, we've got, oops, sorry, I don't want Drush Drush help. I just want Drush. This will give me a list of commands that are available to Drush. And you'll see here from other, from other commands from Omega Tools, I've got this uh, Omega sub theme right here. So if we type in Omega uh, sub, sorry, you find Drush, Omega sub theme dash dash help, we can get a look at all of the um, kind of additions to that command to see what we can uh, provide on, what additional arguments we can provide. So we, in order to use Drush Omega Sub Theme, we've just got to provide a theme, uh, theme name. That's the only thing that we have to provide. But we can also provide a destination. We can tell what starter kit to use. We can tell what base theme to use. Remember, this is all stuff that we chose through the actual UI on our, on our site. Um, so you see here, name is the only argument you need. And then you've got all these options, right? And so two of the options that we want to take note of are enable and set default. We want to do this all in one shot. So let's go ahead and we'll try Drush. Omega sub theme, and this name is going to be uh, sub theme drush example, right? And we're going to enable it and we're going to set it as default. Go ahead and hit enter. And so we've got, and so we've got successfully created the sub theme, and now we've got, uh, it's now enabled as the default theme. And so if we go back to our site. I'm not going to reload it because it'll look the exact same, but if we go to appearance, we can see the list of our themes. And we see that Drush sub theme example is listed here. So that was one command, real quick and easy. Uh, and that was the extent of it. So that's all that we're gonna cover in this video tutorial. The next few video tutorials are gonna be focused on theming and showing you the concepts of theming. So it's not necessarily gonna be me developing uh, a site for look and feel because that's all based on you know unique perspectives and unique needs. But what I'm gonna do is try to give you the tools available that you know how to do that and you can go out and customize your own site. So that's the end for this video tutorial. If it helps you, please leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, let me know. Any questions, as always, torontowebsitedeveloper.com or on YouTube, uh, or check out drupal.org slash forums uh, and ubercart.org slash forums, uh, and people can provide you some help uh, there as well. So again, um, we'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thanks again for watching.